Hey guys, welcome back to this week's episode. If you are new to the channel, my name is Teppo, and this channel is all about photography, filmmaking, and all things related to the creative business. Now today we're gonna to be doing a little bit of an interesting experiment as over the holidays, I finally updated my iPhone 7 to the iPhone 11, and we're gonna be putting up the iPhone 11 against the One DX Mark II. That's a $7,500 setup versus a $1,000 setup. But before we move on, I wanna first thank all of you guys for commenting on the last video I put up on the channel called It's 2020, Help Me to Help You. Because honestly, all that feedback that you guys gave will really, really help me to be able to better serve you guys and to help you guys grow as photographers and filmmakers. So thank you for taking the time to write what kind of ideas you'd love to see on the channel. Secondly, I promised that I would be doing a weekly shout out to someone on the channel. And the first ever shout out goes to Charlie Hunt. Charlie Hunt has been running a great YouTube channel. He's putting out consistently content out there that's really helpful for you guys to learn more about photography and filmmaking. So make sure that you go check him out. I'll make sure to link it up below in my description so you can go check out his account as well. So if you wanna be a part of next week's shout out, make sure you comment below, be a part of this community. That way I can find your channel and check it out and give you guys a shout out on next week's video. Back to today's experiment. Over the holidays, I finally got myself to go and get myself a new iPhone, the iPhone 11. My previous iPhone, the iPhone 7, the screen was just totally smashed and just busted up. It was terrible to use. Every time I was scrolling with my finger, I'd literally get little glass pieces in my fingers. So I finally decided, okay, I gotta go and get myself a new phone. So I replaced it with the iPhone 11. I didn't get the iPhone 11 Pro because I thought I really don't need that telephoto lens. I just wanted the ultra wide lens and the normal lens. But every single time I get a new phone, I go, man, these phones are just continually getting better and better. And you can only imagine going from an iPhone 7 to the 11, 7 11. Yeah, there was a lot of changes. The quality of just the photos has changed so much. So that's why I thought it'd be amazing to go and try out today taking photos with the iPhone 11 versus the 1DX Mark II and see what the final results were. Let's start off with the iPhone first. All right, we got some successful iPhone photos. Now time for the 1DX Mark II. Guys, spot number two right now. This place is really cool. It's got these nice leading lines. We're gonna see what we get done with the iPhone 11 and 1DX Mark II. That was quick. We got our shots wide, medium, tight. Let's go down to the underground parking lot now. All right, spot number three. We're at this underground parking lot. We're gonna try to get some cool shots here with both iPhone 11 and 1DX Mark II. All right, so I'm back from shooting outside. I've put all the photos on the computer. I've edited the iPhone 11 photos and the 1DX Mark II photos and tried to get them exactly the same. And it's time now for you guys to play the guessing game. We're gonna play five rounds of deciding whether camera A or camera B is the iPhone 11 or the 1DX Mark II. Are you guys ready? Are you sure? It's gonna be hard. All right, round number one, camera A, camera B, which one is it? I know right now you're probably trying to just really sneak up on all those little pixels and see which camera it is, but write it down. Camera A, camera B, which one is it? iPhone 11, 1DX Mark II. All right, for this first one, Camera A was 1DX Mark II, camera B was iPhone 11. All right, round two, camera A, camera B, write it down, decide, is it an iPhone 11 or is it 1DX Mark II? All right, the answer, camera A, iPhone 11, camera B, 1DX Mark II. All right, round three, this is a hard one. I even had a hard time with this one. Camera A, camera B. Which one is it? Is it iPhone 11 or is it the 1DX Mark II? All right, if you've written it down, 
Camera A was 1DX Mark II, camera B is iPhone 11. <laughs> I know guys, it was a hard one. Don't feel bad right now if you're guessing it wrong. Let's continue. Round four, camera A, camera B, side by side. Which one is iPhone 11? Which one is the 1DX Mark II? All right, camera A, 1DX Mark II, camera B, iPhone 11. And all right, last round, round five. Decide which one is camera A, which one is camera B. The answer is camera A is iPhone 11 and camera B is 1DX Mark II. How many did you guys get? How many out of five did you guess right? Comment below, I'd love to hear how many out of five you got right. Because honestly, it's actually very interesting to see how similar the 1DX Mark II and the iPhone 11 can look side by side. Now, if you didn't get all five right, don't be so hard on yourself. This was actually a very hard test. And to be honest, if I was right now to post one of these iPhone 11 photos on my Instagram account and say, taken by the Canon 1DX Mark II with 1635, people would probably be like, cool, that looks really great. They wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the iPhone 11 or the 1DX Mark II unless they really started zooming in and started pixel peeping and really checking out the difference between the two photos. Now the reason why a camera like the iPhone 11 can compete with a camera that's cost $7,500 is because of its software. Now an iPhone uses software which is called computational photography. So instead of using sensors and lenses to make a great photo, they're using software in order for you to get a great photo. The iPhone is using software to create better higher dynamic range, to create the depth of field, and just to give an overall higher quality to the photo. Whereas uh, a DSLR, it doesn't have that kind of software. You're having to do that kind of stuff in post, whether it's putting many different photos to make a more HDR-like photo in Photoshop, or using better lenses with higher apertures to get more of the depth of field. And it's crazy, when you look at the difference between the iPhone 11 and the 1DX Mark II, iPhones are starting to look really, really good. I mean, I remember when Instagram first came out and there was this whole iPhone only club and everyone's just shooting iPhone photos, but eventually everyone switched back to DSLRs because it just couldn't compete. And I never thought the day would come, but I almost would say that Instagrammers, you can go back to just shooting iPhone only because, well, you're not only gonna just save yourself a lot of time by shooting straight in your camera on your iPhone and be able to edit with some sort of app and posting your way, but also you're not gonna have to spend so much money and you're not gonna have to lug around this huge camera with this huge lens. Instead, on your trip, you can just take your iPhone. You can just take it everywhere with you. You're gonna have it in your pocket anyways because you always have your phone. And not only can you take photos, but as well you can do all your social media, you can do all your messaging, and so many other things with this little guy compared to this big guy. Now there was times when shooting with the iPhone 11 that the depth of field, for example, the mapping wasn't working, you know, on Aqua's glasses or his nose, it would be blurred out because the software just couldn't figure it out. But no problem, even for this, there's apps, for example, Focus, that's out there, that you can literally afterwards decide where you want the focus to be. So for example, if you did want the background to be in focus and the foreground to be more blurred, you can change that or you can even erase the depth of field, for example, on the pair of glasses if it was blurred out when you don't want it to be blurred out. And the reason for this is, is that the iPhone saves all the metadata from the photo, so you can go in afterwards and change the depth of field. You can even change what kind of style depth of field, what shape it is. There's so many options for the changes that you can make with the iPhone 11. Now, many of you guys are asking, does that mean my DSLR and all the equipment I have, does that mean it's obsolete? Definitely not. When you're shooting with a camera like the 1DX Mark II, there's so much more flexibility for your photography. You can change the lenses so you can have a super wide lens, you can have a telephoto lens, you can have lenses with a really high aperture to get that really nice depth of field. And in general, the lenses are gonna be much better built, giving you a better and stronger image. As well, I feel like the DSLRs are still gonna compete against an iPhone when it comes to low light conditions as well just the flexibility when it comes to the type of photography you're doing. For example, if you're doing uh, night photography and you need a really long shutter, or if you're doing sports photography and you need to be able to take photos really quickly, 
obviously you're not going to use an iPhone 11, you're going to use a camera like the 1DX Mark II for that kind of stuff. Now when we're comparing the image quality of the iPhone 11 to the 1DX Mark II, when we talk about things like dynamic range, it was actually pretty impressive how high the dynamic range was on the iPhone 11 because of its software that I can combine two photos together, whereas the 1DX Mark II, uh, often you can get some blown out highlights or dark shadows. Um, when it comes to depth of field, the depth of field is actually pretty insane on the iPhone 11, almost to the point where it can feel a little bit fake because essentially it's just literally just throwing like a wall of depth of field behind the subject. Whereas with the 1DX Mark II, it's gonna be more of a, a gradual growth of depth, you know what I mean? So instead of just a huge wall, it's gonna kind of be of a gradient of depth when it comes to the 1DX Mark II. So I think that does look better, but honestly, a lot of times I couldn't even tell really the difference when I quickly glanced at the photos. So that just is really crazy when you're comparing a $1,000 iPhone to a $7,500 setup. You're almost thinking, is it really worth it to put all the extra money and time and investment into having this when you can simply just shoot with the iPhone? Now when it comes to the colors of skin tone and the sharpness, um, I feel like with the iPhone 11, sometimes maybe it was a little bit too sharp and the skin tones maybe weren't as nice when it comes to the 1DX Mark II. I think the sharpness was a little bit more natural and I think that skin tones were better, which the Canons are always well known for. So there is a little bit of give and take when shooting with an iPhone 11 versus the 1DX Mark II. But not everyone is so into photography and not everyone needs a huge setup like the 1DX Mark II. So who is the iPhone 11 perfect for? Well, first off, I think the iPhone 11 is perfect for people who don't want to be professional photographers. They don't want to do it full time, but they still need to take great photos for their social media. For example, maybe you're a business coach and you still need to take some great photos or maybe you're a designer and you need to take photos here and there. And I think the iPhone 11 is great. As well, I think it's great for up and comer photographers and filmmakers who maybe you're starting out and you don't have the money or you're not able to invest in all the gear yet, but you still wanna shoot great photos and capture great video. And I think the iPhone 11 is perfect for that. I think now in today's age, there's honestly no reason to, to make excuses saying that I don't have the right gear to shoot the right photos because almost everyone has an iPhone in their pocket. So that means that everyone can go out and shoot great photos and it's just a matter of you going out to practice and getting creative with the gear that you've got. So I think the iPhone 11 is great for people who are maybe more hobbyists or as well people who just need to shoot photos once in a while or people who are starting out and they don't have the money yet to invest in all the gear and instead you can shoot with the iPhone 11 and get great photos anyways. So in conclusion, I wanna answer two questions for you guys. If you're thinking about upgrading your iPhone and you're wondering should I get the iPhone 11, I would say absolutely yes. Coming from an iPhone 7 to the iPhone 11, the image quality, the portrait mode, depth of field, um, ultra wide lens on this camera, that we didn't talk about that too much, but I really like that feature. As well, uh, the battery life on the iPhone 11 has been great. And as well, I don't know if you guys have heard, but the iPhone 11 has a nighttime mode. I was actually up in Lapland, Finland. I just took this crazy Northern Lights photo with the iPhone 11 and the nighttime mode. Check it out. Okay, I'm totally kidding. That was taken with a DSLR. But if I would have known about the nighttime feature when I was taking these photos, I would have definitely tried to take some photos with the Northern Lights and I think you guys would have been very impressed. But the second question I wanna ask, is the iPhone 11 better than the 1DX Mark II? I probably wouldn't say yes, but I would say that the iPhone, and when it comes to computational photography, it's starting to really catch up with professional DSLRs. And I think that it's only gonna push camera companies like Canon or Olympus or Nikon or Panasonic to really push the boundaries. They're gonna really start having to put more software into the cameras to make them even better because companies like Apple are putting out so many features with iPhones. All right guys, if you enjoyed this little experiment comparing the 1DX Mark II to the iPhone 11, make sure you smash that like button. As well, if you're new to the channel, if you're not subscribed yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button here. And as well, if you're interested in watching more content about mobile photography, mobile videography, check out this video about how to make cinematic films with mobile phones. All right guys, have a fantastic week.